amazing atmosphere for one of the most cosmopolitan stagings of the world final in all the 40 years that we've been seeing them. Let's just have a look, a quick look at the riders here. Well, at number one, Calvin Tatum, England's only finalist in his first world final. A lot on his plate, but I fancy he could be a spoiler. Egon Muller, of course, from Germany, a former champion. He might be a danger. Number five, Sean Moran, is the slight favourite to take the title. But looking down in the line, he'll have some danes to contend with. Number nine there on the programme, Tommy Newton, a maximum man in the World Cup finals, in with a shake, definitely. Lance King, an American outsider, and he was world number three last year. And as we get towards the end of the list, while well, the two big danes together, Eric Gunderson, the champion, and Hans Nielsen, the world number two, obviously, they're going to be in there slugging there this afternoon. Well, Odsall has had a tradition of Speedway. It's first staged here just after the war, and we have some marvellous old film from 1948, when Speedway was king here at Yorkshire at Odsall Stadium. There's dear old Oliver Hart. Old-time fans will recognise him. Uh, terrific action in the pits and some pretty fair action around the corners as well. Vintage stuff from Odsall and we're looking forward to a repeat of that this afternoon. Sitting up here with me, well he should be on parade with a damaged leg, unable to take his place where he would have been one of the favourites. Kenny Carter, native Yorkshireman. Kenny, I'm sure you'd sooner be down there on the track instead of being up here this afternoon. Yes Dave, uh, very disappointed to not be down there today riding. Uh, but I'm looking forward to the meeting ahead and uh, see how things go. Well, Kenny will be up here adding his expert opinions to the action and the controversy. He's been here all week, in fact, and sizing up the form, here he is with his sixth of watch. Kevin Tatum, it's his first world final. A heavy responsibility is on his shoulders as the only Englishman here at Bradford. His fast gating could be the key to his success. The start of course so critical. And Tatum perhaps from grid three is the one to watch. He normally hits those starts. Here we go, heat two. And it is Tatum, how's that for race three? What a flying start. Sean Moran is the number one American and local favorite. He's riding in only his second world final, but he has dropped only two points from 12 races here at Otto. And is the current track record holder. And they're terribly impatient, Moran and Gunderson. And Gunderson it is who moves into the lead, taking Sean Moran out wide. And Moran switching back in the most brilliant fashion down the middle of both Gunderson and Collins. Oh, what a sweet move from Sean Moran. Hans Nielsen of Denmark is a very experienced rider. At the age of 25, he's making his sixth consecutive appearance in the World Final. Last year he was second. This year, can he go one better? So Nielsen right out wide. And again, we seem to have seen him on his back wheel. He's doing it again here. He is definitely not playing for the gallery. He's finding the extra drive and must be careful. Lance King, a 22-year-old Californian, has stayed away from British Speedway this season. Third place in last year's final pool, there will be no pushover. My outsider for the title. It is Nielsen, and it is King from the outside. And King and Nielsen together, shoulder to shoulder, as they level up. And it is King, half a win in front. Tommy Knutson is a young dame whose injury problems have hampered him for two seasons. Now he's back in top form as the maximum score in the World Team Cup final in America proved. And that's who looks like he's waiting to pick his moment. He seems to have the legs on Schwartz. Schwartz can't afford to make a mistake, and he's drifted wide and runs and is through there. Oh, a perfect piece of overtaking. Finally, my favourite for the title, Denmark's Eric Gunderson, the reigning champion. Already he's won two world finals this year in team and pairs events. Can he repeat last year's victory to make the hat trick of wins in 1985? And the celebrations will start. I know Audi also will be quick out. And Gunderson fists the air. He is the champion. A vast posse of photographers come galloping out. His Danish teammates will grab him. I have no doubts at all about that. Uh, what a moment for Eric Gunderson. We wonder who will be celebrating in what a couple of hours time here at Bradford, who this huge crowd will be hailing as the new World Speedway Champion. The title, of course, worth, well, perhaps a quarter of a million pounds over the next 12 months. The blue rebound event of Speedway Racing.
And looking at heat number one, a real international cocktail, which is an indication of the cosmopolitan flavour of this staging. England's Kelvin Tatum on the inside in the red helmet colour. Then Viktor Kuznetsov, the only Soviet. First time we've had a Russian rider in for a few years. Egon Muller, he was the champion in 1983. And if he's in the mood, he could be a real danger. And on the outside, Italy's first world finalist, Armando Castagna, currently having a spell with Kings Lynn. And he has looked useful. So remember, three points for a win, two for a second, one for a third. Each of the riders has five rides. Tatum in his first world final on the inside. The crowd on their feet and up to the first corner. And it looks like the Russian has gone and so too is Tatum. has made a terrific start. Tatum in front. Second place is Muller. Third place is the Russian. At the back, it's Castagna. Well, what a start for Kevin Tatum. Almost overcooks the pits corner. But he's in front. And it's a bit wet and sticky out there. The riders at the back quite noticeably are getting filled in and ripping off their face masks but no trouble for Carbon Tatum, he's in front and all he can smell is fresh air 21 year old former public school boy he's been getting in trim with his mum Janet, she's a gymnastic uh, instructor and he's been doing aerobics on the lawn certainly has them at full stretch here is going into the last lap 338 metres around Odsall and it is Tatum in front for England then in second place Muller in third place it's the Russian and the Italian way at the back quite a start for Calvin Tatum he's going to win his first ever world final race with the crowd are on their feet three points to Calvin two for Egon Muller one point for the Russian Heat number two, and into the world final atmosphere comes the slight favourite to take the crown. Sean Miranda on the inside from California, one of the Sunshine Boys. Sean Miranda, born in Lakewood. And, uh, well, he's already won the overseas title on this track. He knows his way around Brabham, and he does like the track. It has rained a little this morning, and the American contingent said that will suit them. It will make the track that little bit grippier and dicier and that suits their tactics Sean Moran on the inside then and next to him Carl Mayer more of a long track merchant than a speedway rider Carl Mayer from West Germany John Cook in his first world final from the United States and Kai Neamey the lone fin nursing an injured ankle a right ankle injury got a specially reinforced boot out there and he's on the outside he could be a spoiler heat number two a watch from Moran from the inside the gate's so important and away they go, and it is Moran who shows Moran, who makes it, and they are moving them all over in second place, it's Cook, and Nimi is tailed off at the back, so the two Americans carving up, heat number two. And Cook is all over the place in second place, but to Moran's in front, and looking very smooth. He leads it. Second place is Cook. Third place is Mayer. And uh, it does seem conditions are a bit tricky if you miss the start. Here is Sean Moran. We have, of course, Kenny Carter. Kenny, we've had a few battles with Sean, but the little American is looking good here, isn't he? It's a, ver a very important race for Sean Moran, this one. It's his first race. He's about 50 yards in front. I think John Cook's dropped out there with engine failure. Uh, Sean Moran will be very pleased to win this race. And uh, getting into the last lap, some drama there because Cook fell and remounted and Nimi saw his opportunity at the back. There is Moran in front, but Kai Nimi, who seemed to have no chance, has moved up into second place. This is Moran a mile in front, taking the heat number two. Second place, Nimi from nowhere, third place, Mayer and John Cook who fell midway through, no damage done, and Moran looking back to see what happened to his uh, fellow Californian. Heat number three, and one of the more favoured riders, Lance King, coming in the blue helmet colour in grid two. All these uh, starting grid positions, incidentally, are worked out on a computerised basis to make sure the riders have their equal share of inside and outside draws. And uh, we're looking down the lineup here for Heat 3. We've got Yano Pedersen on the inside from Denmark. He's a surprise finalist, uh, Little Dame, in his first world final. Could be a surprise packet. Next to him, Lance King, one of the favourites, although 
he has been absent from British Speedway this year as we remain resident in California and that may just take the edge off his race and we'll see. Grid 3, Tommy Knudsen, one of the Danish favourites, he's in white and on the outside there's Knudsen, he really was in superb form in Los Angeles in the World Cup final when he raced to a maximum. If he can repeat that form, he will certainly be a challenger here this afternoon. Tommy, surprisingly, in only his second world final, he was third back in the, the famous Bruce Pennell final in 1981. On the outside, Jan Andersson from Sweden, he is a multiple finalist. This is his fifth world final. On the outside, he's a very, very swift trapper and can be a spoiler. And he is on the outside. Jan Andersson, of course, with Reading, Sweden's number one, six times their national champion. We'll watch for King coming out of two. The inside grid has been the most favoured. Both the early race winners have come from grid one, and here is heat number three. They're impatient, and away they go. And it is King, and it is Pedersen, and they're bunching up to the corner, and Pedersen nudges King over. Great corner. Anderson has swept through in the second place, and here comes Tommy Newton around the outside, and King is at the back, and that's a surprise. It is Pedersen in front, then Newton in third place. Anderson holding that last King. And King took a knock, and one of the favourites from America is in trouble. And Pedersen is carving up heat three, and this is the first surprise of the afternoon. Here's the leader, Pedersen, Kenny Carter. Well, Kenny, this is a real surprise. The favourites are being left, and it must be said the inside grid seems to be worth about a 10 yard start. That's true, David. It seems like the inside gates are making the start this time. Jampers, Peterson made the start of gate one. Tommy Nutson has got back to second place. Well, Lance King is a mile behind. Lance King is almost half a lap behind. But this really is little short of sensational. It's Pedersen in front, and Pedersen picks up three points. Nutson is second. Third place is Anderson. Fearless cornering by a little Jan Pedersen on the inside in red. You can see that King seemed to have the drop, but Pedersen moved him over as Knudsen swings wide and the little Dane stretching clear. Heat number four and Odsel holds its breath because the big two hands nails and then Eric Gunderson flash here in their opening ride. Gunderson, the world champion, is in grid two in blue. Hans Nielsen is inside him and to date the inside grid really has looked as though it's worth about a 10-yard start. So Gunderson on the outside of Nielsen. Then we have the Hungarian unknown quality and quantity. Zoltan Adorzhan, first Hungarian here in a world final. And on the outside, Sam Malenko from America, who could well be in for a new value here. We recall last year in Gothenburg when these two met in the title, America got in the way. We wonder if history will repeat itself. Nielsen on the inside, then Gunderson, bridge three of Dorgen, and on the outside of Elenko will watch for the start. Nielsen will be anxious to take advantage on that inside grid. Gunderson's a fast starter, and Gunderson touches the tapes. Allowed in FIM rules, he's bouncing backwards and forwards and away this time, and Nielsen's made a picture start. Nielsen is away, second place Gunderson going through hard is Ermalenko inside the world champion and again the American is the spoiler and Nielsen got clear and he already has built up a lead of what 30, 40 left, he is going like a rocket. Second place Ermalenko, Gunderson is third. And Gunderson is not making any ground at all, they're all spacing out. There is Hans Nielsen, this is just the start. He would be looking for the world number two still maintains he was robbed last year and uh, making no mistake here and Gunderson significantly is not making any grounds at all Kenny Carter Nielsen really will be looking to this one well, it's a very important start there for Hans Nielsen he's won the first race world champion Eric Gunderson back in third so Gunderson will be very disappointed and it's looking like Hans Nielsen Sean Brand's going to be going to take the title well it's early days still but uh, this is a dream start for Hans Nielsen, three points for him, Ermolenko in for nuisance value as we thought, Gunderson is third, and can he possibly recover from that to retain his title? And we have had some big surprises already here at Bradford with only four heats completed. That's a terrible start for the world champion. Why did it happen? I don't know. I think, uh, you know, the track's really slimy, you know, as you can see, I'm covered in mud. And, uh, like, if you miss the start off, 
of uh, any of the outside gates, you get filled in on the first turn and you've got to remove your, uh, your visor and that. And uh, it just gets you so heavy with all this stuff on. So you know, I made a bad start, but like the first four heats has all been won from the inside, you know. And uh, you know, it's hard when you get to the turn, you get filled in. They've all had one ride each in this Sunbright World Individual Championship final. There's the leader board, so a few surprises there, and a few big names missing, but it's early days yet. Calvin Tatum currently on top of the world. Here's a moment for the young 21-year-old, but he's got some tough opposition here in heat number five, because all four contestants honestly are still well in touch with the World Championship. Sam Ermelenko on the inside has two points. Calvin Tatum won his opening ride this time he's got Sean Moran next to him on the grid. Sean Moran, a winner. And Tommy Knudsen from Denmark, second place, first time out. They are all very, very much still in touch with the crown. And we'll watch again. Ermelenko is the one to have to watch for on the inside. The inside great. Gate has been deadly. And Moran impatient. And away they go this time. It's Tatum and Ermelenko together. And Moran's got a nudge. And Dane has gone. Tommy Knudsen on the first corner. And we have our first moment of real drama here. The race continues. And uh, it is the two Americans in front. The race must stop because Knudsen is still down. There is Tommy Knudsen on his knees. And first Ben Bunching really was the cause of that. He is, okay, let's look at it again and see what happens. You can see Urbelenko and Tatum nudge and Moran tries to go through a gap which isn't there and Knudsen goes down in an untidy heap. Well, Tommy Knudsen okay despite that collision with the fence taking his place in the restart but it really was a hairy old first corner. Sean Moran put himself on back, rightly judged by referee Tor Kittleson to be first Ben Bunching all four go back in but I fancy we're going to have another charge early of the heavy brigade up to the corner. A reminder of the lineup, Irma Lenko on the inside then Calvin Tatum. Sean Moran with three, Knudsen on the outside, had the rough end of the pineapple at the first uh, time of asking. Here we go for the restart of heat five, it's going to be some belt up to the first turn. The way this time, it is Moran, he's got out of grid number three, and Ermelenko's gone with him, and Knudsen trying to go through the middle, and Tommy Knudsen has split up the Americans quite spectacularly. And again, we have a surprise with Ermelenko in front, Knudsen trying the inside line on him, Sean Moran in third place, and at the back, Colin Tatum. Ermelenko, who said he was so glad it had been raining this morning would suit him, but he is really being a surprise packet. And Knudsen, who's got past uh, Sean Moran, but Moran isn't finished. Into the third lap, and Moran is being dropped off as Knudsen closes. And Kenny, well, really, this inside grid, it's almost monstrously unfair. It's such an advantage, isn't it? Very surprising there. Uh, the inside grid seems the best so far. Gate one's made every start. A very good race from Sam Emerlenko. And I think Sean Moran and Kelvin Tatum will be very disappointed with this performance. Well, there is Emerlenko drifting right out where the dirt is. He wins it second place. His boots in third is Moran. We wonder if his chances have gone. Still an awful lot of racing to go. And I fancy it's going to be a close call. I don't think anybody's going to go through this meeting unbeaten. And there is the world champion, Eric Gunderson. He has already been beaten, having only collected one point for third place in his first outing, coming in to heat number six, desperate for points. He really knows he can't afford to drop any further points on his program here at Odsall this afternoon. He's on the inside, and that really has been such a favourite gate. We have been keeping on about it, but it really has been like a 20-yard handicap almost. So we look at Gunderson then, Jan Peterson, his Danish compatriot who won his opening ride from the inside. The Russian victor was Netsov, and on the outside, John took a four in his first ride. He's six, and we'll see how Gunderson tackles the inside. Oh, he's made a flyer, and so too is Cook from the outside. Gunderson away, Cook is second, and third place is Peterson, and the Russian at the back. Certainly no mistake at all there from Eric Gunderson. Currently he has his hands on every major world speedway title. And having really uh, made a bit of a hash of his opening ride, making no mistake here in his six foot. The cowboy, spectacular as ever, is uh, contorting himself in second place. Edison is third. And Kenny Carter, well, Eric was your pre-meeting favourite. He looks like he's getting his act together now, doesn't it? 
fantastic start there from Eric Gunderson. He made an absolute fantastic start and uh, he'll be very pleased with this win. Well, he's got one more lap to go around Oxford. It's uh, 338 metres. Cook's holding on for second place. Gunderson, it's hard to comprehend. He actually is riding with a couple of chicked uh, bones in his uh, spine. He isn't showing any pain at all. Wins heat six by a mile. Cook is second. Third place is Pedersen. And there is the winner, the reigning champion, Eric Gunderson, right back in the reckoning. Well, a few clouds about, but uh, fortunately the weather not in any way too inclement to dampen the enthusiasm of this terrific crowd. Who said Speedway was dying on its feet? A really tremendous turnout here at Odsall Stadium, Bradford, as we look at heat number seven. With now Lance King on the, what must be termed the lucky inside grid. In the first six races, 18 points have been scored out of the inside grid. And the next highest is grid four with nine. So more than double, or rather double exactly the points from the inside grid. And that really tells its own story. It's a terrific advantage. And we've got Hans Nielsen, who has seen all his main rivals drop points. The world number two last year got King inside and then Karl Mayer from Germany on the outside, Egon Müller also from West Germany, heat number seven, Nielsen's in place and Nielsen gets away, so too does King and I think Nielsen might just have the drop, he just had the drop there as down has gone Egon Müller and uh, that is going to be unlucky if they stop it for Hans Nielsen, Müller has gone down and he's trapped there, the referee Tor Kittleson must stop it and Nielsen will be cursing. Let's have a look at it again, the start there. We can see that Nielsen just has the drop on the King. What happens to, oh, well, Muller got a nudge from Carl Mayer there. It was not off. You won't see a more blatant example than that. Well, it looked as though uh, Mayer was the guilty party. He got Muller back in the restart. The referee again, Tor Kittleson, an experienced official, says first Ben Bunching. Mayer really a bit lucky to survive there. And Hans Nielsen next to him in blue may well be cursing that decision because he had got the jump when the race was stopped. He's got to do it all again now. He's got King on the inside of him. King anxious to give his fellow countrymen a chance because he has no score. And I think I'm correct in saying that no rider has ever run a last and come back to win the world championship. And the old pedology beginning to pay out here with uh, King just waiting for Nielsen to settle. Interesting to see how the two West Germans react because there was no love loss when they clashed first time out here. Heat seven again at the start. So important for Nielsen and for King. And King touches the tape, so too goes through this time the hour away. And Nielsen has got a flyer. Nielsen away, second place King. Muller going high and wide around the outside into third place. But really Hans Nielsen, who was second last year, who claimed that he was robbed in his vital race against... Uh, Eric Gunderson, he was distracted at the start, certainly no distraction here. And Nielsen, who is now an Anglophile, lives in Panic Chase, in this country cottage. And the hand of Nielsen it is, who is beginning to stand head and shoulders above the rest of the field here. All his main rivals, we remind you, have dropped points. And Kenny Carter, hands, is looking the business at the moment, isn't he? Yes, Dave, Hans will be very pleased with that race. He made the start in the first race, and then he got stopped, and then he's made it again in this race, and he's going on to win. Fantastic heat win from Hans Nielsen. Yeah, and he's starting fair as well, Kenny. No question of any cheating or tape clashing. There's no cheating at the start. Hans Nielsen is sitting still, and he's looking very good at the moment. And he's got maximum points, and King is second and third place. It was Muller and the Danes in the crowd. There are many of them. Salute Hans Nielsen. He is emerging from the pack. number eight and uh, we'll have a look at Armando Castagno on the inside we'll just see how favoured this inside grid is this is the first time one of the lesser fancy riders has had the inside grid there's the lineup they're kind of the rider perhaps uh, the one to watch in blue with a second place first time out and he's got a flyer and so too has Castagna and Castagna missed the start there and still made up the ground Nimoy going through on the inside some fine action around the first two corners in third place it is Anderson but again clearly saw it does help being on the inside. And 
Spence and beginning to threaten uh, Castagna. But Castagna from Italy, their first world finalist, only won the Italian restaurant. So, uh, he knows all about the old spaghetti there, and he certainly knows he's got a Swede on his tail with Jan Anderson. But it is Nimi, and here is Kai Nimi. And Nimi will pick up three points here, and with a second place in his first line, he's beginning to emerge, as the Scandinavians say, as a black pony. Raining just a little bit uh, before the start of this race, which is affected conditions, and it must be said, isn't the greatest racing track in the world when we start the night. Nimi wins it, the Scandi is second, Anderson is third. Two rides completed a piece and clearly in the lead Hans Nielsen with a maximum six points and that's no real surprise. But it certainly is a surprise to see the next two guys tying for second place. Samer Malenko from America, Kai Nimi from Finland. They have five points and are still very much in touch with the title. Have a cluster of riders on four points. Sean Moran, Tommy Knudsen, Nan Pedersen and Eric Gunderson, the reigning champion. And England's lone survivor, Kelvin Tatum, with his nose on the leaderboard on three. So a terrific start there for Hans Nielsen, and we'll be back at Oddsall very close. Fluctuating fortunes of a world final, won his first run, and then ran a last in his second, three points, so still not uh, totally out of touch, but with work to do. Here is the lineup for Heat 9, Cook on the inside, Bob America, with the care of scare of John Cook, fell in one, all over the place, but holding on to second in his uh, last item. The Hungarian Zoltan Adorjan, not to... Uh, unexpectedly out of touch those four so far then Tatum in three and Lance King one of the fancied Americans who's had a disappointing day thus far only two points a last and a second on the outside here the track may possibly be drying out the sun's out again certainly might encourage riders to uh, have a double around the outside and heat number nine up to the corner it's Tatum and from the inside of this cup and here comes Lance King trying to squeeze inside to Tatum and it's getting terribly tight there and the Americans made a sandwich of Calvin Tatum and his cook and uh, going right out onto the boards and King is still holding on, John Cook has got really hair-raising action here now it's going to be interesting to see where the dirt is as Tatum gets back in touch and we really have the makings of quite a race here John Cook in front, King is second, Tatum who had a rough ride around the first two corners is in third place. Tatum getting back up in touch with King for the second place there. Here's Cook in front, and his chances no harm at all. Into the last lap, and Cook around the outside. Kenny Carter, the dirt does seem to be out there, and Cook is going out finding it. Seems to be a lot of dirt there, out there on the outside now. All the riders are moving out there to get that grip, and it seems to be inside a bit of a waste of time now. Difficult to come from the back with Cook taking three points. King has two, and Tatum one from heat number nine, and really all the action on the first corner there. And Hans Nielsen, the leader, with an unbeaten six points, is in grid three here in heat ten with some real opposition from Sean Moran. Nielsen was the first rider we recall to beat an opponent off an inside gate and now he is on the least favoured starting grid again. Grid three, only seven points have come out of this grid in the first nine races. Can Hans Nielsen lay that bogey here in heat ten? The lineup is a very lively one on the inside of him anyway. Jan Anderson from Sweden who always traps pretty smartly. He is in grid one in red. Sean Moran needing points, he's dropped a couple. Hans Nielsen in three, and the Russian Victor Kuznetsov on the outside. We'll watch for Nielsen in grid three, in the raw. Moran <laughs> is impatient to wait this time. And who will it be? It is Nielsen and Anderson together. And Anderson has made the start. Nielsen's in second place. Moran got a nudge. And now what can Hans Nielsen do from the back? As Anderson swings in front, Nielsen is second. Moran gaining ground on him. And now the battle is thoroughly joined with Jan Anderson who took the advantage of the start as Nielsen swings right out into the dirt and has ridden an absolutely perfect corner. Oh, he just picked his time and swept around the outside. Beautiful action from Hans Nielsen. We wondered if he could do it from the back. He has answered that question in the most emphatic way. He just swung out into the dirt, kept going and went past the Jan Anderson as though the Swede had dropped a chain into the last lap and Hans Nielsen, here's the man 
who is beginning to look more and more likely. He's done it from the start. He's Moran's a mile back. Moran is perhaps his main rival. He's left him by 50 yards. Over the line for the third win for Hans Nielsen. Supreme style. Second place, Anderson. Third is Moran. And Nielsen will now be thinking maybe he has done all the hard work. He's certainly beaten Eric Gunderson. He's beaten Sean Moran. He has two to go. And he really did look magnificent there. Hans Nielsen, you've always blown this world title when you've been expected to win it in the past, but surely this is the form at last for a world champion. Well, I certainly hope so, yes. I mean, it's the same as last year. I won my first three races, so hopefully it won't be the same in the last two. I really hope I can pull those last two, um, two off as well. But you're the only rider, who, apart from Kate Naimai, who can actually win from outside the red grid. So t take us through this overtaking, the overtaking the afternoon. Right. Well, I'm uh, going around the outside around you and right out in the dirt where nobody else has been before. And it was really so dry out there, I just shot past you and Anderson. And that was really pleasing out of that corner there. And I just dropped, on, dropped it on him in the next corner because just to make sure he didn't go uh, inside me again. Well, more finishes like that and overtakes and you'll be world champion now. I hope so, yeah. I think we might go. Coming into heat 11 there, and uh, Eric Gunderson, the world champion, has just seen his main rival perform in the most masterful way. And you wonder if Gunderson will try a repeat dose of that high, wide riding. He's on the outside here, Eric, so he, unless he makes a cracking start, he has got to go out where the dirt is. As we look at the lineup for heat number 11, and it's going to be yeah, Kai Nimi on the inside. And Nimi from Finland, who nobody really rated, though we did know he could be a spoiler. He's on the inside. He has five points and was second uh, when the leaderboard was last shown. And he's got Tommy Lutzen next to him, Egon Muller in three, and Gunderson in four. That is the lineup. And he's 11 could be an important one because we have three riders in here still very much in touch with a place on the rostrum. And there is one of them, Eric Gunderson who dropped two points first time out, but came back and looked a real champion in his last ride, won it by oh, the Burbial Mile. The lineup then for heat number 11, Nimi on the inside, dark horse, five points. Tommy Knudsen, a lot of us fancy this lad, he's got work to do, only two second places. Egon Muller is nobody's mug, three points from grid three, and Gunderson on the outside, who may well be tempted to follow the example of his compatriot Hans Nielsen, if he misses the drop, just keep the throttle screwed right on and go out there where the dirt is because there is some dirt and there is some drive and we've heard Hans Nielsen say that uh, it was so dry out there and just flew past his opponent Jan Anderson in the last race and there's a nervous start here and I would suspect the two Danes here Knudsen and Gunderson are trying to psych out Nimi on the inside who has again <laughs> the inside grid and Nimi's having none of it moving out a bit nearer to Knudsen Getting a real bell biter down there in heat 11. Who will make the start? We'll watch the Goodison. We'll watch the Nimi to the inside. And it is Goodson and Goodson may close down. Goodson is in front. Second place coming around the outside. It is Goodison, but Nimi has shrugged him clear. And again, we saw how much an advantage it is to be on the inside because Goodson seemed to have the drop. But Nimi struck him clear. And here comes Goodison around the outside. And just rather as we thought, he's going to swing out where the drive is. He didn't really get out to the dirt. And Nimi is again able to shake him off. And the Finn is riding the race of his life here. My goodness, and trying the inside run. And Lutzen is back in third place and Simon Yanova. Here comes Goodness and again out into the driving dirt. And this time surely he's got the legs. And again we have a sensational piece of overtaking. The Danes have quickly weighed up Otsal. They know where the drive is. Kenny. Goodness and really was spectacular there. It's a fantastic piece of riding there from Eric. He was behind in third, second place for two laps. And he went round the outside where Hans Nielsen did. Fantastic. So it's clear if you grab the throttle and go out in the dirt, you can get past people here at Odsall. Goodness and wins it. Second place, Nimi. Knudsen is third. Surely his chance is gone. And Eric Goodnison isn't going to give up this title without a rare battle. Well, you can see that Nimi is holding off Gunderson. Gunderson tried the outside, 
and then he came back down the inside to see if he could uh, change his fortunes there and again the fin was able to counteract the move there's no drive at all you can see the, the tire almost coming off the rear rim there as it drives on the slick inside passage now Gunderson is down the inside here and obviously thought I'm not going to get by this way and the message is quite clear when in doubt uh, Kenny Carter give it some welly look at him go here that's right Dave he went straight for the outside there did Eric Gunderson just like Hans Nielsen did in the previous race and coming out of the turn he's got the speed on uh, Kai Niemey tremendous action there and a fine piece of overtaking P number 12 brings into the action the uh, real upset of the afternoon. Samuel Malenko from California, not riding in a British club this year, won the pool, of course, last year. And he was on the inside, and uh, sudden Sam, as they call him in the States, will put himself around uh, to no ill effect on the first corner. If you care to be the rider next to him, he's going to feel an elbow, I'm sure. That's Amanda Castagna. Malenko has five points. Castagna has two, Pedersen has four, Colmer on the outside on one, and Ovalenko seems to be terribly close to the rider in group two. He comes into the start of heat 12 and up in the corner, Ovalenko again has gone off in a jet propelled fashion. He leads in second place there, Mayer going high. So too is Castagna, Castagna in second place, third place now is Pedersen. would have given Sam Ermelenko much hope here in his first world final. It's very difficult to take a world title first time out, but Ermelenko's only dropped a point, and clearly he's going to his full and in second place, Castagna battled back there. Looking good, the Italian really is by far the best product from Italy we've seen. This is Ermelenko, 24 years old, and he saw the rain earlier, and loved it, and the track is drying out, and the racing has improved dramatically. And so too, Amir Malenko's chances here. He is emerging into second place overall behind Nelson. Here's Malenko, three more points for him, two for Castagna, one only for Pedersen. Well, three rides completed, Hans Nelson, the leader, unbeaten on nine points, but after that, well, we have a few eyebrow raises. Sam Ermelenko in second place on eight, and that is a shock. Eric Gunderson, the reigning champion, still hanging on in there on seven, along with another surprise packet, Kai Nimi on seven points. It does look like the new champion is going to come from that leading group. Breathing right down their neck, though, we have John Cook, we have Sean Moran, Tommy Knudsen, and Jan Pedersen on five points. And England's Kelvin Tatum still just in the picture on four. And of course, everybody with a couple of. No, I don't. I don't think it is. You still got to believe that you still got a chance to win it on 13. Otherwise, otherwise I might as well pack off. You see, but uh, it's been run on 13 before, and like Hans, he's gone really well today, and uh, he's he's got maximum points nine so far. But like he's got two rides to come, and uh, so so have I. And like um, a lot of things can still happen in in those two rides, you know. But it is, it's in his control, though, and he's winning from all grids, which no one else well, seems to be able to do. That's right. Uh, he's two points up on on, on the rest of us. Uh, he's one point up on Sam Malenko. And, like, uh, you just got to sort of hang in there and still score the points you can to uh, to have any chance of, of getting on the rostrum and maybe end up on top, you know. Well, the track cost you a lot in the first race, but let's have a look at the overtake in your last heat because not many people are overtaking. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm chasing Kainim here and then I knew I had to go for the outside line I hit a lot of dirt here and I knew that was the racing line that was all I could go for and I just kept it kept it going there and uh, I got past Kai here and uh, I sort of dropped it on him a bit you know to stop him coming up inside of me again and um, from there on you know it's just to the checkered flag well the Danish fans are thoroughly enjoying themselves this afternoon and uh, we wonder if they're going to be starting to celebrate. Certainly looks like Nielsen's going to be their man as we approach the climax of this world final. We've seen how this kind of event can turn itself on its head, though. Anything can happen. As we look 
And he, number 13, with Paul Moyer from Germany, who has been literally out of touch only one point. Jan Anderson, four points, grid two. Gunderson, who certainly hasn't given up the ghost yet. He is in grid number three. And Calvin Tatum on the eighth, fight from England on four points. <coughs> As we look at the lineup for heat number 13. And who will it be who jumps out of the start? Uh, away they go, and up to the corner it is Goodison who's got out of grid number three. Goodison leads it in second place, it is Tatum in third place. It is Mayor Anderson is the one who is left. And, uh, well, the track has been graded, and it looks as though it's at the surface is a little more evenly spaced. As Goodison certainly got a good start from grid number three. Second place, Tatum going well. Third place, it is Mayor. back on peak form. Tatum doing well in second place. And you can see the gap that's developed here as Eric Gunderson really has torn them apart here. He is going so very quickly. He's already dropped points, but he's certainly not uh, burned the tower. And he did the second place Tatum. Third is Anderson. Coming into heat number 14, and we have the meeting of the two riders who have uh, really caused all the sensations here at Bradford this afternoon. Pretty well unfancy, both of them, Kai Nimi, he's in white in grid three, and Sam Malenko, the American, who uh, has looked much more the goods than his more illustrious uh, fellow countryman, Lance King, Sean Moran. Both reckoned to, to be favorites, but it's Malenko, unfancied, who has come through, he's only dropped one point to Hans Nielsen, he is in grid two, and looking well set for a place on the roster, and if Nielsen does anything silly, Sam Malenko could be the world champion, and that really would be just about the biggest surprise since uh, Jerzy Sasakiel in 1973. Let's have a look at the lineup. The Russian on the inside, and well, out of touch really. Sam Malenko to watch in grid two. Hi Nimi in grid three, and Lance King on the outside. And off, oh, what a start from Nimi. Nimi makes the start, Romanenko is second, King is third, the Russian rearing and bucking falls back into last place, but Nimi got away from grid three, and the starting grid certainly now is much more even as Romanenko swings around the outside, and Nimi is aware of him. Here's the battle we can see in race number 14. Ermolenko with work to do, and Nimi is drifting out, and Ermolenko can see the opportunity down the inside, not able to take it. Speedway and Ermolenko drifting gradually out to where the dirt is. He's seen the Danes use it to, to superb effect. Nimi is withstanding the challenge. Finland's climbing in this race could put him in the first three. He wins it. Ermolenko is second, third place in his king, disappointing Lance King. And that makes it even look a lot healthier for Scandinavia and the Danes. Well, it was a prodigious start from Kai Nimi in grid three. Rides in a straight line, then cuts across. You can see the Russian doing some Rodeo stuff on the inside. Ermolenko and King levelling out behind the, the fin, but Nimi starting has really been storybook stuff this afternoon. Heat 16, and he's running moments for the unbeaten hands, Nilsson, the clear reader. And he will be on the outside here. He hasn't uh, seen a start from this grid yet. And he's got uh, quite a handful inside him. Let's look at that uh, lineup. Tommy Knudsen from Denmark is compatriot on five points out now of contention. As too is John Cook, but uh, still will put himself around. Cookie, he's in group two. Armando Castagna, who has not been disgraced as the first Italian in a world final. And Nielsen on the outside who has started well and shown when he has had to uh, grab a handful of throttle and come to the back, he can do that really in the most supreme style. So we'll watch for Nielsen around the outside. He's going to have to 
moves straight out into the dirt, one would punch, unless he can really get a flyer out of the tapes. But there are some quick starters inside him as well. Goodson, it is his fellow Dane who's holding up proceedings. And Nelson looking pretty calm, but not so must be going through his mind. I must his insides be turning over here, waiting for the start of heat 16. He's the leader. He's got to start from the outside. Ridge. They've blown the wind and away they go. And up to the first corner, Nielsen certainly got away with them. And he's got a nudge there. He got a nudge from John Cook and down he is gone. And we have melodrama here at also because it was Cook who came across and Nielsen is down and he looks to be in some trouble. Let's look at it again. And Nielsen, you see, looks to have got a clear start. But who hit him out of the night air? It was Cook who comes across. And uh, they all pile in together. And it's Nielsen who goes down. Again was first Ben Bunching. And we should have all four riders back in. But they're calling for a stretcher. And this is a dramatic tragedy for Hans Nielsen, who looked so supreme. He is down. And they're calling for a, tractor, uh, to a stretcher. And he could have hurt himself, and that really is a disaster. He's on his feet. And if he's fit enough, he can go back in. The call for the stretcher was premature. The top old boy, Ken Nielsen. Well, he's back on his feet, and I'm sure he'll go in the restart, and I'm sure he'll have a point to prove. So then, uh, I see. Have a look at that melodramatic incident again. Watch Nielsen on the outside and Cook from grid two as they hit the corner. Now, who was to blame? Well, the referee Tor Kittleson said nobody, all four back in. And although they called for a stretcher at one point, he's okay, as you can see, shaken, stirred perhaps. And it's going to be interesting to see if that kind of an incident is going to shake his composure or his complacency. Nielsen on the outside really took a, quite a whack there as he hit the fence. And uh, to be sure, he'll be looking at the restart, perhaps with a little trepidation, or maybe we'll stir him up a bit. Who knows? Heat 16. Looking at the lineup again, Tommy Knudsen, grid one. John Cook in two. Amanda Castagna from Italy in three. And Nielsen on the outside, who seemed to be sailing to his first world championship. Uh, knocked out of his stride there in the first uh, time we saw the start of heat 16 and they're taking their time to settle down Nielsen again must be boiling up inside he knows that he really got an equal start last time he tried to come across and uh, paid the penalty but maybe he'll lock back this time who knows what's going through his mind we'll know in just a moment or two and uh, they start Marshall unhappy with Tommy Ludson on the inside he's not in his proper grid they are marked out there in chalk as you can see, and they've got to stay within the confines of that grid. Now then, heat 16 again, Nielsen on the outside. Oh, he holds his breath. And away they go this time, and Nielsen again has got a good start from the outside. And he comes across, and this time he has got the drop. And he's been squeezed right out at the back. And he went out into no man's land, and it's Knudsen in front. In second place, it's Cook. In third place, hard. Now it comes Hans Nielsen, and Nielsen goes past one. And, well, that, that incident there surely has shaken him up as they all swing out into the racing line. It is Knudsen in front, it is Cook second, and suddenly this 1985 World Speedway final has been ripped wide open. It's the lap number three, Cook and Knudsen up front, having a rare old ding dong. Can Nielsen possibly get up here as Cook moves into the lead? Has Cook has ridden right out of his racing boots here. Knudsen's right out on the fence and still not finding the line. And suddenly we have a whole different complexion on the World Speedway final. Cook wins it. Second place is Knudsen. Nielsen is third. Well, where's it going to go now? Eric Goodison's right back into this. So too is Sandra Malenko. And uh, we have the most open situation we can recall in many a world final. Well, that really is building to a terrific climax at Odsall. Those four riders all on ten points. Gunderson, Nimi, Ermolenko and Nielsen shaken up 
after that spill with just one ride to go. Moran and Cook both on eight points. Nudson on seven and Kelvin Tatum and Pedersen both on six. Him in grid two, Hans Nielsen in grid three, Kelvin Tatum on the inside there, Jan Pedersen on the outside, who will jump away, and it is Nielsen this time, Nielsen who leads it, he is in front, second place Tatum, Nimi is uh, at the back at the moment as Pedersen comes through into third place, so Hans Nielsen who we saw in his last ride getting squeezed out of the first corner, never able to retrieve the situation, is in front and uh, he knows that a win here will mean that his main rivals have got to succeed and one of them here, Kai Nimi, is at the back here, he's certainly blown his chance. The dirt seems to have moved out, in fact it seems to have disappeared, Kenny Carter certainly has not much drive around the outside as we saw earlier in the afternoon. Seems though the track's getting a little bit slicker now, Dave, that's a very important win for Hans Nielsen. I think he rode the same bike in that race as the one what he crashed on. Well, it's Nielsen in front now, and uh, a little bit of drama at the back there as Nimi tried to burst through, but it's still Tatum in second place, and third place Pedersen. Nielsen sets the target, 13 points he finishes with. Second place is Tatum, third is Pedersen, and now we must wait, and we must wait to see what Sam Romalenko can do, and what Eric Gunderson can do, and it's going to go the full distance here at Bradford. Coming into heat number 18, really, it's the battle of the author of that. Bobby Nelson comes inside, should feel comfortable enough as he hits the start here. But this one does not really affect the final placings on the roster at all. And uh, Nudson has had a disappointing afternoon. He hasn't won a race so far, and he really did feel that Tommy from Cover 2 Court the British League with a big say in this title. But uh, he hasn't really got it together at all. And after that uh, fabulous maximum in Los Angeles in the World Team Cup final, he's never really shown a glimpse of that form. He's going to win Heat 18, comfortably enough, unless he does something very silly. In second place, it's the Hungarian Zoltan and Jordan. And in third place, it is uh, the Soviet rider. And that's Victor Kuznetsov all over the place with Carl Mayer at the back. Tommy Nudson, and well I know that Tommy will be deeply disappointed with this performance. He did come here with a very real chance of winning. This is going to be his first race win of the afternoon. Respectable enough, he'll finish on oh, what? Total of 10 points, but he might be happy with that. Well, Hans Nielsen, at least you're in a runoff, but you've got to sweat as to whether there'll be a runoff with uh, Eric Gunderson and possibly Sam Ermelenko to see whether they get the same number of points you get. Yeah, obviously it'll be nice if they get beaten, but uh, if not, I'll just have to go for the runoff. It was a bit uh, unfortunate that the second last race uh, when I came off, I had to take the other bike because the handlebars were spinned on the one I was riding, so uh, that wasn't going quite as good. But uh, we've got the handlebars changed for the last one, and that was going okay. So. Uh, just have to cross my fingers now. Well, of course, you still can be champion. We ought to stress that without a runoff, but everyone's wondering whether there'll be a runoff. Are you look, going to look back at Heat 16 and, and wonder whether you could have done better and whether you were distracted by the spill before the run, rerun? Well, no doubt about it, yes, I will look back, but uh, if I can win a still, you know, uh, I'll probably forget about it. <laughs> Well, this is unquestionably the biggest moment in the career of Sam Urbelenko, a complete outsider. You've got more 50 to 1 against him even being in with a chance of the world title uh, before the meeting. He now has a total of 10 points. He needs to win this race. Heat number 19 to go into a runoff with Hans Nielsen for the championship. He is in grid number three. He's been a gritty competitor right throughout the program. Let's have a look at the opposition. Egon Muller on the inside in red from West Germany. Jan Anderson in blue from Sweden. Both of those two riders capable of causing all kinds of trouble for Ermelenko. Ermelenko in three and John Cook, his fellow Californian, on the outside with 8.8. Cook helped Ermelenko beating Nielsen last time out. 
How would he react now when he's in against his fellow countrymen? Spark so critical, away they go. And up to the corner, it is Ermolenko. And it is Anderson. And Anderson has the inside line as they all swing wide. And it's second place, just off, oh, just leveling out. It is Ermolenko, but Anderson in front. And so Cook is coming as well. And Anderson really has made the starting put in the way here. And John Cook has come inside Ermolenko. And we have a real race on here as Ermolenko swings out into the dirt. And Anderson is causing a few hearts to miss beats here as Ermolenko swings around the outside and he's got the drop on him. Oh, terrific speedway. Sam Ermolenko proving that he can rise to the occasion and we are going to have a runoff at least as long as he can keep going for another lap or so. Haven't had a runoff for the title since 1973, but Ermolenko now has a nerve wracking 338 metres to go to hold on and in second place it is Anderson who hopped out of the traps and got in the way for a while but there was no holding Sam Ermolenko is almost down there oh what a moment he almost overtook the corner oh that was a nasty moment Ermolenko wins it second place is Anderson third is John Cook Ermolenko really had to work hard, almost clouted the fence here. You can see at this stage it looked as though John Cook was under him and Ermolenko threw caution to the winds, getting out where the drive is and coming from a long way back to challenge Jan Anderson and he swings around this pit corner and he seems to find overdrive around the outside of Anderson who had no chance of withstanding that kind of challenge and Ermolenko setting sail for a runoff for the world crown. Coming into the last heat and still everything to go for and Eric Gunderson, the reigning champion, must really be thinking it's his birthday. He seemed to be completely out of it after a third place first time out. He kept plugging away. He's won his last three races. If he can get up here in this heat 20, he can go into a runoff for the title with Sam Urbelenko, the American outsider, and Nielsen, his old rival, looking at the lineup. And these are the riders that Gunderson must beat Sean Moran on the inside of America, disappointing on eight points. Then Gunderson in two, Lance King again disappointing from the United States in grid three, and the Italian standing on the outside. Still gate one has been the most fruitful with 39 points. Gunderson's in two here and he'll be looking for a clear run up to the first corner. And looking for Moran on his inside shoulder. 20 tall on this one and Moran has got a flyer. Oh, sure Moran anticipated there and he's away and Gunderson now has work to do because Lance King is getting around the outside of him as well. And the Americans will be anxious to keep Gunderson out because it then gives their man Ermanenko a level chance in a runoff and this is a disaster for Eric Gunderson. He missed the start completely. And well, can he possibly find the extra drive and he's coming up to challenge. Here comes Eric Gunderson around the outside and that's magnificent. He's taken them apart. Oh, Gunderson just kept it all wound on and left the Americans as though they both had punches. What sensational. to the last lap the Danish crowd on their feet so are all the people here because this really is magnificent speedway for Eric Gunderson he's back in with a chance of retaining his title we're going to have a three man run off we haven't seen one of those since 1951 and Gunderson wins it Suddenly we have a world final which is going to go down in the record books as a classic. It seems that Nielsen was cruising, Ermolenko's got up into the runoff and uh, Eric Gunderson produces a party piece to join and make it a three-man runoff for the title. So here we go for the most critical race in World Speedway in 1985 and one of the most crucial races in so many world finals. A three-man runoff, 1951 was the last time we were in a situation like this. Sam Ermolenko from America, the dark horse, the surprise packet has drawn the pole position on the inside. Next to him, Hans Nielsen, he'll be in grid two. And Eric Gunderson, who has come back from seemingly being out of touch and out of control of his title, is on the outside in yellow and black. Kenny Carter has just been telling me the grid, the uh, dirt has moved to the outside, which may favor Gunderson. He is in grid four. 
and Kenny himself is a bit nervous. We're all nervous. The crowd here are biting their fingernails. They're going to take their time to settle. There is Gunderson, who has come back from nowhere, really. And looking up towards the first turn, the crowd are holding their breath. It's a massive crowd here at also What a dramatic finish to the first ever World Speedway Championship stage outside Wembley. We could hardly have asked for a more tempestuous climax. Nielsen is in grid two. Emelenko on the inside. He'll rush him into the corner if he gets out level. Gunderson on the outside. May swing out into the dirt and try to swoop from the high banking. Here we go. The start is going to be so, so important. Who will show in front? And it's Nielsen who's got a flyer. And Gunderson's gone with him. And Nielsen and Gunderson, the old rivals locked together. And Gunderson's just got the drop. Eric Gunderson just had to drop. We saw this last year in Gothenburg, an almost identical first corner. And it won the title for Gunderson, and Gunderson's kicking on. Eric Gunderson just made the start and just got the line on Nielsen, and Nielsen is not making any kind of inroads. Urbanenko is third. And well, Kenny. What do you reckon about Eric Gunderson? He really has come back from nowhere here. F fantastic start there from Eric Gunderson. He won the race on the first turn, moved out to the dirt, and the ball goes well. He doesn't have any mechanical feelings. He's going to be the 1985 World Speedway Champion. And he's just got one lap to go. And the celebrations again are going to be sensational. The heart bleeds for Hans Nilsson, who may just have lost through a bent handlebar. But Gunderson goes over the line and listen to the reception. retains his crown and looks overcome with emotion his old rival Hans Nielsen just beaten in the final final analysis again and the celebrations are going to be doubly sweet this time because Gunderson must have thought his chance had disappeared but it's him again Eric Gunderson that gets the victory celebrations and an unusual view of Yorkshire Eric Gunderson, you thought you'd lost that title, but what a finish. I told you, Gary, you know, after that first race, like Ollie said to me, you know, we ain't finished yet. It'll be one on 13 today, like he said, 14 last year. And I've done it again. I beat him in the run-up, you know. I can't believe it. You oh, thought you'd lost it, though? I thought I lost it, but I put myself back together again. What a sensational start to yeah. that, that run-up. Well, you know, I dropped it on Hans. You know, Hans and me is the one, number one and two in the world. And, like, I just proved that I was that bit better than him on today, you know. I did it again. I have again. a little feeling for Hans, though. We must have thought that he'd won it at one stage. Well, you know, this is the world's fine final, and everything can happen on it. I've won it. Well, there is the final result of this Sunbright World Speedway Championship final. Eric Gunderson retains his title. Hans Nielsen is second. Sam Romalenko, the shop merchant, is third. Suddenly, it's raining here in Bradford. It must be tears for Hans Nielsen, but it's golden.